The first is multimodality image fusion, which, as you can see from these images from the literature, refers to fusion of ultrasound images with CT, and it could also be with MR images in real time. Now, other institutions have had a fair bit of experience with this and are finding this to be extremely helpful, particularly in intervention, as shown here. We're just getting started with this at UAB. This is a shot of what it looks like. And the way it works is you scan and you're looking at the ultrasound image overlaid on the CT or MR image, so they're co-registered. What you see in one image matches what you see in the other. Where I think that's going to be helpful is what I've termed here finding things. And here's an example of that. This is an axial scan of the liver and it has, contains a small hypodense area here uh, that measures less than a centimeter. We euphemistically call these ditzels because we don't know what else to call them, but we're routinely asked to evaluate these sonographically. The challenge is being able to find these lesions on the ultrasound and know that you're looking at the same lesion as we've seen on CT. Typically what we do is our sonographers will review the CT or if it happens to be an MR, we'll review the C MR with them and try to relate the abnormality to anatomic landmarks around it. So maybe blood vessels, the gallbladder, bile ducts, and so on. And hope that they can use those landmarks to know that they're looking in precisely the same location as, as the lesion. The multimodality image fusion method that I just talked about, I think will make this much easier because they'll be able to actually look at the CT and see the ultrasound overlaid on top of it and know conclusively they're looking at the same place. Here's another example of an axial image of the upper to mid abdomen in a patient. And you'll notice that there is a small enhancing lesion here in the liver that I've outlined. And the question often comes up whether this is real or a perfusion abnormality. This is something we encounter very commonly at UAB evaluating multiphasic CT with arterial phase studies. Now, in this case, you may notice that there is an enhancing pancreatic mass as well in this patient with a neuroendocrine tumor, and this is a hypervascular metastasis. But more often than not, or certainly quite commonly, we see these and do follow-up CTs, and they turn out to be not real. How great it would be if combining contrast ultrasound with multimodality image fusion, we can quickly decide using just ultrasound that something is not real and obviate the need for as much CT follow-up as we do now. The second potential killer application for 3D imaging is volume flow. In many areas of ultrasound imaging, on a daily basis, we try to estimate volume flow through vessels. In this case, a dialysis access graft with an estimation of volume flow. And we do that by looking at the cross-sectional area and multiplying that by the velocity to get an estimate, at least, of volume flow. But it's only an estimate and is subject to errors. It would be wonderful if we could do this quickly and easily in other locations as well, such as the carotid arteries here, or moving on to the liver in the portal venous system. We see flow in the portal vein. It would be great to be able to estimate what the volume flow in that vessel is, or in this transhepatic shunt, being able to know what the volume flow is, or in this hepatic artery in a transplant patient. Well, it turns out that using 3D techniques, you can actually estimate volume flow, as was beautifully illustrated in this article from Journal of Ultrasound and Medicine in 2006 by the group from the University of Michigan. And I won't go into all the technical details here. You can read the article for those details if you wish. But the basic point is that you can use 3D imaging to directly measure volume flow, which is something we really desperately want to do. And in this article, they ended with this statement, which was 
both brilliant and probably a little bit ahead of its time in terms of availability of this technology. I've underlined the word easy in two locations. They said this would be easy to implement and medical diagnosis would be easy to achieve. Unfortunately, it hasn't been as easy to implement as they would have hoped, but my expectation is sometime in the next few years, this will become available from ultrasound vendors. They followed up with another article in 2009 looking at volume flow techniques using 3D in a phantom and looked at, in this case, at pulsatile flow and showed a good correlation between what they were measuring and the actual flow setting. But as I said, this is not yet available clinically, but my hope is that it will be available in the next couple of years. And I think that's going to revolutionize many areas of imaging, including evaluation of the liver in patients both prior to and following transplant or following shunt placement. So what do I do while I'm waiting for the killer applications? I start by scanning in two dimensions to get the lay of the land, as it were, and in most cases, certainly if it's a normal or near normal scan, we just scan in 2D, maybe 3D to get some nice pictures if we want to, but we generally don't need it. If it's abnormal but straightforward, pretty much the same thing. Stick with 2D, maybe add 3D if we really want to, but it's not necessary, for example, to use 3D ultrasound to diagnose gallstones. Where I'm tending to use 3D these days is for the abnormal complex cases that I want to analyze offline later on. And the advantage of being able to do that is you don't have to work everything out while the patient is still in the scanning suite. You've acquired the volume and you can play around with that volume on the workstation later. As I mentioned earlier, primarily using multiplanar imaging, interrogate that volume in multiple different planes and hopefully come out with a bit better idea of the relationships between normal and abnormal structures or between normal structures that are encompassed within that volume. So what I hope I've convinced you of in this presentation is that 3D sonography of the liver will be good for absolutely something. If not immediately, in the next few years, especially with the adoption of ultrasound contrast agents, the approval of ultrasound contrast agents in the United States, and the wider availability and accessibility of this technology, along with volume flow imaging. Thank you very much for your attention.